very, very excited to have Ventura Area Theater Sports here today. Uh, Ventura, Ventura Area Improv, they used to be called Theater Sports. Um, they're an improvisational group and the county's longest running free script theater group. And they create comical skits of nothing but audience suggestions and the odd strike of imagination. So they're going to use an open format today and the, they will be coming to um, the audience for questions. So this is going to be a very exciting event. Let's give them a big round of applause. Um, <laughs> thank you. And this is Tom Mueller. He's going to introduce the rest of the group. He is the founder of the company. Okay, uh, I'm Tom Miller, and uh, let me bring out my friends uh, of the Ventura Improv Company. Come on up. Yay! Hi, I'm Trex. I'm Shayna. I'm Talia, and I'm Becky. And we're going to begin with uh, a, a warm-up game, really called uh, Freeze Tag. Um, okay, you two are out here. Would you move around randomly? What we're going to do is be doing a series of scenes that will interrupt and change and transform before your very eyes. Freeze. Begin. Master. Master, are the plans complete? Oh, good. I love this new cloak that you made for me, by the way. I sewed it all night long. Do you like the trim? The trim? Yes. That is actually what I wanted to talk to you about, Ezekiel. Oh, freeze. Dance, my marionette, dance! Oh, how I wish that you were a real human, a real boy. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute, I didn't really mean it. But I am a real boy. In freeze! Freeze! <laughs> oh, oh, yes! Oh, 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 it's going to be twins! Oh, I'm so excited. We're so ready for this, my baby, my darling. Yes, we are. If I could have two people. 
people out here right now, please. All right. Nice. What's going to happen here is, is uh, they're going to be doing a scene, and if they say something that I don't necessarily care for, I'm going to say new choice. And uh, until they new choice, until it's something that I particularly like, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> sir, what were you doing at 11 o'clock this morning? You were in class. What class were you in? Uh, creative writing. Creative writing. Ah. Let's have something. Let's have something like in a creative writing class. Margo, this is one of the most innovative yet disturbing stories I've ever read. It's, it's based almost on true facts. Please take your seat. What have we said about? This? Margo, you would be the next Hemingway, the next New Faulkner. choice of Hemingway. You'd be the next Faulkner. New choice of Faulkner. You'd be the next uh, Helen Gurley Brown. <laughs> I love her. If <laughs> you just respect boundaries, not only in your stories, but personally. But I thought everybody wanted to feel like they were beaten to death with words. New choice. But I thought everybody liked reading about um, blood. New choice. But I thought everybody enjoyed the good monster story. <laughs> we do. But read the second paragraph here and, and try to work out why it doesn't uh -huh. work. The monster crept into Gretchen's room. Gretchen was unaware of the monster's existence. She had just had a long night with her boyfriend, Robert. Robert was a nice guy, but nice guy. Robert was um, overweight. But <laughs> Robert was uh, homeless, but he didn't mind that. Much. I'm going to stop you right there, Marco. Get back to the monster that we were doing. Well, my name is Gretchen, and my boyfriend's name is Robert. Um, <laughs> and he is overweight and homeless. My <laughs> name was so based a little on truth. Yes, but how did you find this out, Marco? I wasn't going to tell you, Professor, but I've been watching you. I wasn't going to tell you, Professor, but I'm in love with you. I wasn't going to tell you, Professor, but uh, I, I'm Robert's daughter. <laughs> Your pictures are all over his uh, shopping carts. Your pictures are all New choice. Your pictures are constantly being uploaded to my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Would this not have come up in, unless I started critiquing your story? Well, I came to Oxford College to find you, to seek you out, to get to know you. But why? Just because you're Robert's daughter, what has that got to do with me? New choice. Just because you're Robert's daughter doesn't mean that I have to accept you, do I? No, <laughs> Just because you're Robert's daughter, does that mean you're my daughter, too? <laughs> Couldn't you know? I, I don't know. Yeah. 
apocalypse. <laughs> There's been a huge shortage.
what they say. What they say. Just check it in to say hello.
study uh, here? History. History, okay. We've got us a history major right here. And, um, and you are his iPhone 4S. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a history major, iPhone 4S. Great. Let's see. <laughs>
Todos buenos.
ladies. Take five. Take five. <laughs> Wondering at home, it was a lemon flavor. 
have something to sure. feel a little more appropriate. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be uh, great. <laughs>
You walk in with a brilliant idea, they look at you and say, Mom, the plumber's here. Well, now you're a plumber. Yeah. Maybe your idea can't be used right now, and you have to throw it away and go with what you're given. And that's that's actually rather difficult to do. Yeah. Because Being we're also familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being willing to change. Yeah. Yeah. Flexibility. Letting, Flexibility. Yeah. Letting go of all the preconceived notions that you have entering the scene and just saying yes and. It's a big thing with improv. Yes and and moving along, you know, and to build the scene higher, you know. To come out with somebody and say, this is an alarm clock, and they say, that's a uh, Chia pet. <laughs> okay, and scene, you know, there's it's not, you know, so it's like, this is an alarm clock. Yes, it is, and it was grandmother's alarm clock, and you just build, build upon that, you know, so. Cheryl's got another question. Cheryl. My husband's been doing this with them for 10 years, and I'll tell you, he listens to me now. <laughs>
life in general? What would you say your greatest asset to uh, uh, improv artist? Uh, an, an improv artist's greatest asset? Listening. Listening. Uh, be, willing to, be willing to adapt to the situation. To any situation and just go with it. Being humble? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and everyone has, it's funny, when you're with a, like our group, you know, there's, there's quite a few of us that perform, and everyone's good at specific things. Like, everyone has certain talents, and, and it's always fun. <coughs> once you really get into that repertory ensemble feeling, you can really have fun sort of pushing them to whatever their strengths are. There's some people mm -hmm. that are great with character work or accents or music. And that's nice. But you don't have to be good at all of those things by any means because of the teamwork yes. aspect. You can have to work with a partner who, you know, compliments you. And you don't have to be, you know, people are like, oh, I'll never, I can't think that quick. And it's like, it's not really that. And there's lots of improvisers who We're take it really in their own stupid. stage. We're all really stupid. I went to college. Yeesh. Okay, let, let's, uh, why don't we do a good voice story? What kind of story would you like to hear? Uh, go for it. Ooh, ah! story, right. <laughs> okay. 